Zone 2 cardio is one of the trendiest forms of exercise that many doctors and longevity experts are raving about. The first thing we would do is say you probably need to be doing at least three hours a week of that zone 2, which is building an aerobic base. I didn't do regular cardio until 2020, and I definitely didn't track my zone 2 training. So about 10 months ago, I implemented zone 2 cardio into my exercise routine. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my results. I actually took my cardiorespiratory fitness from above average to the elite level in just a matter of three months with this style of training. So make sure you watch until the end to know how to do zone 2 cardio and improve your longevity in the process. First, let's clarify what do we mean by zone 2 cardio. There are a total of 5 heart rate zones used in exercise. Zone 1, which is 50-60% to 60 of your max heart rate. Zone 2, 60-70%. to 70%. Zone 3, 70-80%. to 80%. Zone 4, 80-90%. to 90%. And zone 5, 90-100%. to 100%. Zone 2 is a lighter form of exercise where your body is burning the most amount of fat for fuel. It sits just below the anaerobic threshold after which you start burning glucose and at the peak of fat oxidation, which is also called the fat max. It's also called the lactate threshold, because after that point, your body begins accumulating more lactic acid from exercise than it can clear it. This creates the burn sensation. Zone 2 training promotes the creation of slow-twitch muscle fibers, or type 1 muscle fibers, that help to clear out lactate. Resting lactate levels are 1 to 2 millimoles per liter, and the lactate threshold begins over 2 millimoles per liter. Professional athletes are much better at lactate clearance and they have a higher anaerobic threshold, which means they have a higher level of cardiorespiratory fitness. They can run a lot faster than a regular person while still staying in zone 2 and burning fat for fuel. That's the goal of zone 2 training, to increase your anaerobic threshold and lactate threshold. You know, we have our patients spend 80% of their cardio training time in zone 2. That's really pushing that metabolic flexibility. You, This is a... This is the training system for making sure you expand the capacity of your mitochondria to, under ever-increasing demands, have the ability to utilize fatty acids for oxidative phosphorylation, and glucose for that matter. So I started training zone 2 cardio last year, and I've been tracking it for about 10 months. First, I would need to calculate my zone 2 heart rate zone. One easy way to do this is to find your maximum heart rate first. The formula for your maximum heart rate is 220 minus your age. For me, it's 220 minus 29, which means my maximum heart rate is 191. I'll share with you why this might not be the most accurate number, but it's a good starting point. My zone 2 heart rate zone is 60 to 70% of 191, which is 115 to 133. This is the typical range where my body is burning the most amount of fat and is increasing my cardiorespiratory fitness. As my fitness improves, this number should also increase, as I'll explain shortly. To measure this heart rate during exercise, I use the Polar H10 chest strap. I put it on during my runs, and it shows my heart rate on my phone. While running, I try to stay between 115 to 133 beats per minute. If you don't have a heart rate monitor, then you can also pay attention to your breathing to assess if you're in zone two. Usually, if you're breathing through the nose, you're still in zone two. And if you start breathing through the mouth, you've crossed over into zone 3 and you're burning glucose. When training for zone 2, you want to avoid that. If you see that your heart rate rises too high or if you start breathing through the mouth, then you should actually slow down. Reduce your speed, let your heart rate drop down and let your breathing rate normalize so you can breathe through the nose again. I know it sounds a little bit counterintuitive. You would think you need to just run as fast as possible for as long as possible to improve your cardio. However, the goal of zone 2 is to increase your anaerobic threshold, to be able to run as fast as possible while in zone 2, because it improves your mitochondrial function, improves lactate clearance, and promotes metabolic flexibility. That's where the longevity benefits come from. You have a very big base for cardiovascular function. Professional athletes, the people who have the highest cardiorespiratory fitness in the world, they spend 80-90% to of their training time in zone 2. They literally spend over 10 hours a week training in the zone 2 zone because that's what increases their cardiorespiratory fitness the most. And it's also the least taxing form of training on your nervous system. Research finds that the people with the highest cardiorespiratory fitness as measured by a VO2 max have the lowest risk of mortality. Having very high cardiorespiratory fitness, so having a VO2 max that is elite, we would define that as the top 2.5% of the population compared to below average, is a five-fold reduction in all-cause mortality, Whoa. death from any kind. Whoa. I mean, there, we, there, we don't have drugs that have a 5x reduction in mortality. Here's what my workout plan looked like. 
I did three zone 2 cardio sessions per week, lasting for 45 to 55 minutes each. My heart rate stayed between 115 to 145 beats per minute. Based on the 220-29 formula, I would already be in zone 3. But what I noticed was that as my cardio respiratory fitness improved, I was still able to breathe through the nose while being in a higher heart rate zone. The reason was because I was already fitter than the average person. And I was able to stay in zone 2 at a higher heart rate zone. Now granted I didn't use a lactate meter to measure my blood lactate levels, but I was still able to breathe through my nose. And I didn't feel any burn. So that's why I figured that it's much better for me to calculate my maximum heart rate and my zone 2 heart rate zones based on my VO2 max and my cardiorespiratory fitness, not on my chronological age, because, you know, I'm much, much fitter than the average 29-year-old. I did happen to measure my VO2 max before I started doing zone 2, and I got a result of 53 milliliters per kilogram per minute. That's already the lowest mortality risk group. However, for my age, it was only above average. Then I measured my VO2 max the second time after having trained zone 2 for three months and I got a result of 66 milliliters per kilogram per minute. That's an elite category of 18 year olds. Your VO2 max would peak usually when you're 18 to 19 years old. But because I just improved my fitness so much, I was able to still have that result when I'm 29 years old. Because of that, I moved my goalpost for zone 2 also slightly higher to accommodate the cardiorespiratory fitness of an elite 18 year old. 220 minus 18 is 202. And 60 to 70 percent of that is 121 to 141. This is the heart rate zone that I'm now tracking for doing zone 2 cardio because I'm much fitter now, my VO2 max is higher, and I'm still able to stay in zone 2 with a resting heart rate that is slightly above. So during the first three months of my zone 2 training, my VO2 max went from 53 to 66 milliliters per kilogram per minute, which is an amazing result. I already outlined my workout plan three times a week of zone 2 cardio for 45 to 55 minutes. As someone who wasn't doing that much cardio before, I actually enjoyed it a lot. If you're running in a park or a forest, then it's very enjoyable. I'm listening to podcasts, getting sunlight, breathing fresh air, not looking at a computer as I do all day for work. So I actually started to love doing this. I've kept doing this same routine for 10 months now. And I feel that my cardiorespiratory fitness is much better than it was before, even though I was still above average 10 months ago. I'm going to be getting my vo tested again in the 12-month mark to see if I've made any additional improvements. Here are the other things that I noticed over this 10 month period. I've gotten leaner obviously because of the higher amount of energy expenditure. My strength has decreased slightly because I now weigh about 3 to 4 kilograms less than before, but I've still maintained about 90% of my strength. So it's a good trade off in my mind because I was already at the advanced level with strength training. With better cardio, I just feel better during the day and when I'm taking the stairs or something like that. Of course, I wasn't struggling with this before, but I do notice that going from a VO2 max of 53 to 66 has had visible improvements in my aerobic function. Another question people might have is regarding injuries and joint pain. If you're running like three hours a week, is it going to wear down your joints? I haven't noticed anything like that and my joints are working fine. Actually, my bone density is about 1.5 to 2 standard deviations above normal because of doing a lot of strength training before. So it could be because my bone density is so high and I don't get really any joint pain from running either. Some other people who have never done any resistance training, they might get some joint pain if they're just running too much. So that's why it's important to do both resistance training as well as some cardiorespiratory fitness. Running alone isn't going to increase your bone density. You need weight-bearing exercise and a higher protein diet for that. Lastly, if you do get injured from running, then change it to cycling. It's less impact and can be as good for cardio. Swimming or hiking can also be adequate. I've tried walking with a 30 kilogram weighted vest, but this didn't put me into zone 2 and I was below zone 1 even. However, walking up a hill with a weighted vest or hiking up a steep hill could take you to zone 2 if you're less fit. Overall, I'm very happy that I started doing zone 2 cardio. I'm going to be probably doing it for the rest of my life because I enjoy it and it has had very beneficial effects on my health and cardiorespiratory fitness. Based on the research, then having a higher cardiorespiratory fitness and higher VO2 max is one of the best things for your longevity and reducing risk of all-cause mortality. If you want to learn the key concepts of longevity that can lower your biological age and add healthy years to your life, then check out my free longevity training at seamland.co forward slash longevity dash training. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seam. Stay optimized, stay empowered.